The most indicative test for prostate cancer is A. Urography B. Magnetic resonance C. Digital rectal examination D. Prostate specific antigen. Answer 1 D. An elevated prostate specific antigen level indicates prostate cancer, at least to abnormal PSA level or the presence of a palpable nodule on DRE to justify a biopsy and further investigation. Question 2 Secretion of ADH is not stimulated by which of the following? A. Decrease in blood volume. B. Dehydration C. Increase in blood volume D. High sodium intake. Answer 2. C. ADH is produced by the hypothalamus and secreted from the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. Secretion of ADH is stimulated by dehydration or high sodium intake and by a decrease in blood volume. Question 3. What is the most important nursing diagnosis for a patient in end-stage renal disease? A. Risk for injury B. Fluid volume excess C. Acidity intolerance D. Altered nutrition. Answer 3, B. Kidneys are unable to rid the body of excess fluids which results in fluid volume excess during. Question 4, a patient is experiencing which type of incontinence if she experiences leaking urine when she coughs, sneezes, or lifts heavy objects? A. Urge B. Overflow C. Stress D. Reflux. Answer 4, C. Stress incontinence is an involuntary loss of a small amount of urine due to sudden increased intra-abdominal pressure, such as with coughing or sneezing. Question 5, A client is receiving a radiation implant for the treatment of bladder cancer. Which of the following intervention is appropriate? A. Monitor the client for signs and symptom of cystitis. B. Flush the urine down the toilet. C. Restrict the client fluid intake D. Place the client in a semi-private room. Answer 5, A. Cystitis is the most common adverse reaction of clients undergoing radiation therapy. Symptoms includes dysuria, frequency, urgency, and noxuria. Document the color of the patent urine. Be aware that patient who complain of dysuria may require a urinalysis to rule out infection. Question 6. Which of the following signs and symptoms would the nurse expect to find in a client who is experiencing urge incontinence? A. Inability to empty the bladder B. Loss of urine when coughing C. Involuntary urination with minimal warning D. Frequent dribbling of urine. Answer 6, C. A characteristic of urge incontinence is involuntary urination with little or no warning. Urge incontinence is a type of urinary incontinence in adults, which involves sudden compelling urge to void and results in involuntary leakage of urine. Question 7, You have a patient that might have a urinary tract infection. Which statement by the patient suggests that a UD is likely? A. My pee smells sweet B. I pee a lot C. I go hours without the urge to pee D. It burns when I pee. Answer 7, D. A common symptom of urinary tract infection is dysuria. A patient with a UD often reports frequent voiding of small amounts and the urgency to void. Question 8. The primary reason for taping an indwelling catheter laterally to the thigh of a male client is to A. Allow the client to turn without kinking the catheter. B. Prevent accidental catheter remove C. Eliminate pressure at the penoscrotal angle D. Prevent the catheter from kinking in the urethra. Answer 9. C. 
The primary reason for taping an indwelling catheter to a male client is so the penis is held in a lateral position to prevent pressure at the penoscrotal angle. Prolonged pressure at the penoscrotal angle can cause erythrocutaneous fistula. Question 10. The nurse is collecting data from a client. Which symptom described by the client is characteristic of an early symptom of benign prostatic hyperplasia? A. Nocturia. B. Scrotal edema. C. Occasional constipation. D. Decreased force in the stream of urine. Answer 10. D. Decreased force in the stream of urine is an early symptom of benign prostatic hyperplasia. The stream later becomes weak and dribbling. The client then may develop hematuria, frequency, urgency, urgent continence, and nocturia. If untreated, complete obstruction and urinary retention can occur. Question 11. A male client has a tentative diagnosis of urethritis. The nurse should assess the client for which manifestation of the disorder? A. Hematuria and pyria B. Dysuria and proteinuria C. Hematuria and urgency D. Dysuria and penile discharge. Answer 11, D. Urethritis in the male client often results from chlamydial infection and is characterized by dysuria, which is accompanied by a clear to mucopurulent discharge. Because this disorder often coexists with gonorrhea, diagnostic tests are done for both and include culture and rapid assays. Hematuria is not associated with urethritis. Proteinuria is associated with kidney dysfunction. Question 12. The renal system does not play a direct role in regulating which of the following? A. Blood pH. B. Blood solute concentrations. C. Blood pressure. D. Blood temperature. Answer 12. D. The renal system does not play a direct role in regulating blood temperature. The renal system secretes and reabsorbs solutes in the blood such as sodium ion, potassium ion, and bicarbonate. The renal system regulates blood pressure by altering the amount of water held in the blood, blood volume. The renal system regulates blood pH by excreting and reabsorbing hydronium ions and bicarbonate. Question 13. You have a paraplegic patient with renal calculi. Which factor contributes to the development of calculi? A. Increased calcium loss from the bones. B. Decreased kidney function. C. Decreased calcium intake. D. High fluid intake. Answer 13. A. Bones lose calcium when a patient can no longer bear weight. The calcium lost from bones form calculi. A concentration of mineral salts also known as a stone, in the renal system. Renal stone disease is a common problem in patients with spinal cord injury. The factors responsible are thought to include hypercalciuria and chronic urinary infection. Question 14. Immunosuppression following kidney transplantation is continued. A. For life. B. 24 hours after transplantation. C. A week after transplantation. D. Until the kidney is not any more rejected. Answer 14. A. After an organ transplant, the client will need to take immunosuppressant drugs. These drugs help prevent the immune system from attacking, rejecting, the donor organ. Typically, they must be taken for the lifetime of the transplanted organ. Organ rejection is a constant threat. Question 15. The most common early sign of kidney disease is A. Sodium retention. B. Elevated bund level. C. Development of metabolic acidosis. D. Inability to dilute or concentrate urine. Answer 15. 
B. Increased BUN is usually an early indicator of decreased renal function. Although, immediately after a renal insult, blood urine nitrogen, BUN, or creatinine levels may be within the normal range. The only sign of the acute kidney injury may be a decline in urine output. Question 16. Calculi are stones that can form anywhere in the urinary tract. Which of the following is not one of the means of locating the calculi? A. Computed tomography. B. Blood test. C. Radiography. D. 4 pi allegraphy. Answer 16, B. The stone can be located through radiography of the kidneys, ureters, and bladder. Intravenous pi allegraphy, computed tomography, scanning, and renal ultrasonography. Question 17, which cause of hypertension is the most common in acute renal failure? A. Pulmonary edema. B. Hypervolemia. C. Hypovolemia. D. Anemia. Answer 17, B. Acute renal failure causes hypervolemia as a result of overexpansion of extracellular fluid and plasma volume with the hypersecretion of renin. Therefore, hypervolemia causes hypertension. Fluid overload leads to endothelial dysfunction due to inflammation and ischemia reperfusion injury, causing damage to glycocalyx and capillary leakage. Capillary leakage leads to interstitial edema and at the same time, due to significant loss of volume to the interstitial compartment, there is a reduction in circulating intravascular volume. This may then lead to reduction in renal perfusion pressure and subsequently to Aki. Question 18. Which of the following symptoms is the most common clinical finding associated with bladder cancer? A. Suprapubic pain. B. Dysuria. C. Painless hematuria. D. Urinary retention. Answer 18. C. Painless hematuria is the most common clinical finding in bladder cancer. Other symptoms include frequency dysuria, and urgency, but these are not as common as the hematuria. Bladder carcinoma is the most common neoplasm of the urinary system. Question 19. The nurse is caring for a client following a kidney transplant. The client develops oliguria. Which of the following would the nurse anticipate to be prescribed as the treatment of oliguria? A. Encourage fluid intake. B. Administration of diuretics. C. Irrigation of Foley catheter. D. Restricting fluids. Answer 19. B. To increase urinary output, diuretics and osmotic agents are considered. The client should be monitored closely because fluid overload can cause hypertension, congestive heart failure, and pulmonary edema. Question 20. Urinary tract infection are most common in A. Infant B. Female C. Male D. None of the above. Answer 20. B. Cystitis also called urinary tract infection is more common in women because women have a shorter urethra than men and the urethra in the woman is located close to the rectum.